Hey, welcome to AP Calculus AB. In this course, what you're going to find is that we are going to do a combination of both some video teaching, some online stuff. Uh, I'll do some reteaching in class, and uh, hopefully between the two of them, you'll get all your notes, uh, be able to have a lot of work time in class, and uh, find the pace of the course uh, to your liking. Uh, calculus starts out with limits, and everything that we're going to be doing in this course is going to be based on the concept of what we call the derivative. And the derivative is is defined based on limits. And so we start with this first unit, and we do some limits. Some of the stuff you're going to be familiar with, we're going to relate it back to some vertical and horizontal asymptotes a um, little bit later on in the in the unit. And some of it might be a little bit new to you. So first of all, let's talk about what the concept of a limit means. If I were to have a graph, and it doesn't matter what type of graph I have, say I just have something like this, and I choose a point, and let's say that point is at A. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this, and let's say that that point is at B, a y value of B. The way I would write it is, this is the function f of x. The limit as my x value approaches A of the function f of x. So as x goes towards A from the left-hand side, and as x goes towards a from the right hand side, or some values are greater than, than a, um, of the function f of x, that's going to be equal to b, the y value. So if there's no breaks in the graph and stuff like that, you can just plug it in and, and all of that and, and, and get, your, get your value. We're going to be taking a look at this both conceptually and algebraically. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say I just have something like the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 2. A lot of times there are restrictions on the domain of this uh, function right here. In this case there's not, so I can just plug 1 in. So if I plug 1 in, that limit is 3. Also, if I look at something you could simplify fairly quickly, let's say of x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now, I can't just plug 1 in there, because if I plug 1 in there, I get division by 0, or a concept that's undefined. So what I need to do is I can factor. If I factor the numerator, x um, plus 2 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, these x minus 1s will cancel. And I'm back to where I started before with the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 2. So that is 3 again. You could have different types of factoring. You could have some different piecewise functions. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at some piecewise. And, and one of the things I find that people have trouble with in this first unit is actually graphing those piecewise functions. Um, another thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look, look, look at um, rationalizing denominators, or rationalizing square roots. Not always denominators, sorry. It could be in the numerator. Let's say I have something like the limit as x approaches 9 of x minus 9 over the square root of x minus 3. The square root's in the denominator this time. And what I do, anytime I see a square root involving limits, what I want to try to do is I want to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate over itself. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. And remember with the conjugate, it's the square root of x, but then it's going to be plus 3 instead of minus 3. And I had to multiply both the numerator and the denominator. I'm just or reorganizing this fraction. On top, I'm going to leave it alone. Because these are not conjugates, I'm going to go ahead and leave them as x minus 9 times the square root of x plus 3. And on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and multiply it out. Because they are conjugates, I can go first times first, which is x. And I can go last times last, which is minus 9. The reason why you multiply by the conjugate is that O and the I and FOIL will drop out, so those middle terms drop out. Now the x minus 9s are going to drop out, and really what I have is the limit as x approaches 9 of the square root of x plus 3, which is 6. Sometimes it's not going to be possible for you to rationalize or factor this denominator, and then we might say our limits do not exist. Like if I have an asymptote, let's say I have something like this. The limit as x approaches 0 
of 1 over x. Remember this graph is a rational function. At 0 it has a vertical asymptote. So as I approach 0 from the left hand side and from the right hand side, um, it grows without bound from the right, it goes down without bound from the left, so we would say this limit does not exist. And the common f terminology is DNE on that. Um, some of the factoring will get a little bit harder, but uh, stick with it. You'll be able to do it. If you have trouble with the factoring, let's, you can ask me about that in class. Let me show you a little example maybe where the factoring is a little bit more challenging. Nothing terrible be here, but uh, a little bit more challenging. Let's say I'd like to look at the limit as x approaches 2. And let's go 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. And 5x squared minus 7x minus 6. First of all, look for if they have any common monomial factors I can get rid of, any, com any constants, any numbers I can get rid of. In this case, they don't. Um, make sure 2 is a restriction. If I plug 2 in, this is going to be 5 times um, 2 squared is, is 20, um, minus 14, minus 6. So that would give you 0. So you do have to eliminate. There's got to be some sort of restriction. Um, the 2x squared, I can factor that into 2x and x. And then if it's plus 2, it's got to be what? Minus 2 there, minus 1 there. So you guys learned, oh, man, my pen's messing up. Sorry. You guys learned back in middle school to kind of do that um, factor by grouping. That's okay. You can do that that way as well. Let me clean this up. If you have the factoring questions in class, make sure you ask them. Um, and I'll try to clarify for you. This is 5x and x. And now the factors of negative 6, and we've got to get it to add, so I go O and I and FOIL is going to be negative 7. Um, I'm going to get what... Uh, negative 2 here, that outsides will give us negative 10, and plus 3 here, and insides will give me plot positive 3. So now, and I kind of expected that 2 is a restriction on my domain, so x minus 2 is I want to have it and both as both of the factors, so that I can take and cancel those out. And now I can let x go to 2. If I let x go to 2 on top, I end up with 3, and on the bottom, I end up with 13. So this limit is 3 over 13. After I, after I eliminate the x minus 2's. One of the things that people will get in a little bit of trouble with in this unit is that um, they will have a hard time graphing some piecewise. And some of the piecewise functions, what we do with piecewise functions a lot of times is we'll graph it and then after we graph it, um, we'll take a look at limits that are coming from either side. So let's just look at real quick a, a kind of straightforward or easy piecewise function. Let's say that I have 3 minus x, which is an equation of a line, if x is less than 1. Let's say I have 4, if x is equal to 1. And let's say I have x squared plus 1, if x is uh, greater than 1. Remember, 1 is our breaking point. That's an x value of 1. So here's x value of 1. Uh, if I put it in there, I get to 2. That's not inclusive. And this is a line, so it goes through the point at 3. And I'll try to sketch it a little nicer. Let's see here. Uh, let's do that. So it's a line going that way because it's, it's less than it's less than 1. Um, for our point at 1, it goes up to 4. So here's our point at 1 right there. And then this one, x squared plus 1, is a parabola. It also has a first point at 2. And it's a parabola that grows this way. Now, what we would do here is um, I could ask you basically a few different questions about this. Um, first of all, I could ask you the limit as x approaches 1. And if I put a little superscript negative there, that means a left-hand limit. It's the limit as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side. So as I come down here on the x values and I get closer to 1 from the left, that's the way I write it. Uh, let's just call this function f of x. 
and the limit as x approaches 1 from the left uh, from the left hand side is what y value does it converge to in this case it converges to 2 for the same thing if I do the limit as x approaches 1 from the right hand side I write it with a superscript plus that means value is greater than 1 so as I approach 1 coming down I get closer and closer to 1 this way I'm also going to 2 now since the left hand limit and the right hand limit are equal then I can say the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is 2 if these were different values then this limit would not exist. I'll do an example of that in just a moment. The only time this 4 comes into play is if I ask you this, what is f of 1? f of 1 is 4. Otherwise it doesn't really have anything to do with limits. These left-hand limits and right-hand limits become important in uh, some of the things we do. We look at some breaking points and where things are differentiable later on in the course. If you had something like this, let me just sketch a piecewise that may not converge to the same value. Let's use negative 1 as a breaking point and let's just put a a line over here and then put the point here and we'll let it grow uh, without bounds, something like this. So let's say this is my function g of x. If I take the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of g of x that's going to be 1 because as I approach 1 from the left I'm on this graph and that's 1. If I do it this way the limit as x approaches 1 negative 1 sorry negative 1 from the right of g of x that's going to converge to 0 because as I go on this side to the from the right it's going down to 0. So that means since these are not equal if I had the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x not from either side this is a does not exist these must be the same value for the limit to exist those must be the same value for the limit to exist um, all right so that takes us through the first concept most of it's going to be factoring uh, maybe some simplifying the square roots maybe some simplifying of complex algebraic fractions some things we practice on our algebra review in the summer review um, and then just a lot of this initial concept of limits I'll take some time in class tomorrow to go over um, a couple of additional examples to clarify these, uh, these problems for you and um, answer any questions you may have. And then from there, I'll give you some more time. Good luck.